So I've already made six cards and they've really taken me not very long. And I just wanted to show you how clean it is to get started card making. The only mess that I've got at the backs that I've actually taken off all my sticky tape and glue. So now we're gonna move on to some more, slightly more challenging designs. But if you follow these step by step, you'll get perfect results. So the first design that I'm going to do here is what we call a easel card. So it's really simple and easy to do. So I'm just going to fold my piece of cardstock in half and I'm then going to, in fact, let's do a twisted easel because this one's a little bit more challenging, but looks really, really good. So what I need to do now is actually fold this over into a diagonal. And I'm just going to do that and score that in position like that. So we can see there's the twist in the easel and it's going to stand like that. It's gonna make sure I reinforce these score lines so that it will stand all by itself. There we go, that's absolutely perfect. Right, now we're going to need something to put on the front of the card. So I'm going to go into my card kit and I'm going to take one of the cards that's the same size. So I'm gonna move over to my guillotine. This is what we call a straight um, knife guillotine. And it will just literally cut through the cardstock as simply as that. So that's going to be the panel that's going to sit on the front and then it'll all fold flat to go into the envelope. So I now want to decorate this. I'm going to go into my packs of cardstock that I've got here and pick this really pretty red. It's a lovely seasonal colour. I want it to be slightly smaller than the design that, on the base that I've got. So this is a little tip for you. Decide on the size of the border that you want. So I want just a little small, probably about a three millimeter border around the edge. So if I then pull this card, so it's about six millimeters, so it's equal on both sides, I can turn it over, take my scissors, I don't even need to use the guillotine, and just cut that using the edge of the card as a guide. So I'm just going to cut that second layer that we've got there. I've got a rogue little foam square following me. And then if I pull that into the middle, you'll see I've got an equal border all the way round. Now, I need two of those so I can repeat the process, but because of the way my cardstock's designed, I'm actually just gonna use my guillotine. So this shows you another little trick. So lay the two squares together, line it up to the edge of the guillotine, and then cut down and then rotate it through one quarter turn. Again, make sure that it's all lined up perfectly. And again, cut the guillotine. You'll see that I've got those absolutely perfect. Now we're ready to put them down. So one of them's gonna go onto the front of the card. So I'm just gonna use a couple of pieces of tape to hold this in position and and do some matting and layering. So when we're putting more than one piece on top of the other, we refer to it as matting and layering. It's um, a technical term, but it means that we all know exactly what we're doing when we're reading instructions. So I'm now gonna hover over the top, make sure that I've got this equal border at the top and the sides, and then subsequently the bottom will be the same. And there's my first panel. And I'm now gonna move over to my card and this is the base that I need to cover. And instead of putting the tape on the base, always put it on the top layer because this is the smallest layer and we don't want the glue going over the edges. Although you will find a lot of glues that dry clear and are really quite forgiving. So let's just take that off. And I'm just gonna show you another little trick as well. I'm just gonna peel the the tape off and I'm not going to take it all the way off I'm just going to peel it a little way like that and then I'm going to line this up as I've done before just catch that down and then pull this back to get it in position if I hadn't got it in the right position because I've only got a little bit of the glue sticking it I'd have been able to lift it off so that's the base and there's the top it really looks quite pretty doesn't it now, when we're adding the top to this diagonal, we need to make sure we get it in the right place. So it, again, it's important to put the tape 
actually onto the card itself because this is the smallest area so if you always think about it as putting the tape onto the smallest area you can't really go wrong so that's the first one that I've got there and there's another one here and I've got another one here perhaps should be getting myself a little waste bin now to put all these bits in but you can see I'm not making a mess although this isn't always how I craft at home okay let's get this lined up so I'm going to look at the design and turn it around to face me so I can see which way up I want it I'm lining up that bottom corner to make sure that it's perfectly level which it is you can see at the back it's only stuck on the bottom half but I've already given and created that twisted diesel now we're ready to do the decoration so let's take a look through the designs that we've got here and I'm looking for something that's square that's going to really stand out on there and oh wow here we go this has got to be the one so I love those polka dots I think they're going to look fantastic on there and so is this oh but then I've just seen the design underneath that's going to look as good as well okay so let me show you how I would choose so I'm going to take the main design from each of these and just take a little look at them so the polka dots on there and then Santa over the top does look fabulous but let's remove that and take a look at that one that one looks equally as good I know I could make two cards like this so let's do the first one and we'll do it with the Santa seeing as though I still have him in my hands okay I need some foam squares and let's put these on the back so this is where we're going to do some layering and this is what we call um, pyramage so we're building it up so that one layer goes on top of the other so they're the little pieces I'm going to need a stopper now the stopper is so that the card will actually stay up so I've got that first now important that we check which way it opens so that we get this on in the right position so I actually like to open it and then hold it down while I'm doing that so I'm happy with that so we can just lift the backs off here and this is a great one to get the children involved with as well this isn't just about crafting for yourself think about all the people that you send Christmas cards to when you do your Christmas card list and how much do you pay for those packs of cards the ones that by the time you get to the bottom you're thinking well gosh I really need another one for Auntie Mary or Auntie Betty but this isn't really nice enough to send to them best thing about making them is every single one of them will be gorgeous and you'll be proud to send it too also they get put to the front of the mantelpiece and everybody saves them so I'm lining up the design making sure that his hat matches and his little beard is all lined up then I've got the last layer here this is just needs a couple of foam squares again but I think a three will do that so we'll just do and pop these to one side perhaps I'll have a little clean up after this one and I'm going to lay that over the top I'm looking at his hat which is a good place to start and then round the edge really happy with that love the fact that we've got something a little bit different with that twisted easel and this is going to be the stopper so we need some foam on this because we want some height now if I don't put height on it there isn't a big enough ridge for the card to butt against so you end up with it still falling flat and it just slides over the sentiment so these little foam squares are perfect for this and then I'm going to show you as well how to line this up because it's really important we get it in the right place so slide the card up so that you can see the twist and then make sure the sentiments face in the right way that would have been me having to lift it off I need enough space so that it sits inside the red area but I also want to make sure that it lines up with this edge of the card so I'm going to move it across until I'm happy it's in the right place there we go that's absolutely perfect I'm really delighted with that <laughs> 